This is section 74 of Mark Twain's Speeches by Mark Twain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Galveston Orphan Bazaar by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. Address at a fair held at the Waldorf Astoria, New York, in October 1900, in aid of the orphans at Galveston. I expected that the governor of Texas would occupy this place first, and would speak to you, and in the course of his remarks would drop a text for me to talk from. But, with the proverbial obstinacy that is proverbial with governors, they go back on their duties, and he has not come here, and has not furnished me with a text, and I am here without a text. I have no text except what you furnish me with your handsome faces, and— but I won't continue that, for I could go on forever about attractive faces, beautiful dresses, and other things. But, after all, compliments should be in order in a place like this. I have been in New York two or three days, and have been in a condition of strict diligence night and day, the object of this diligence being to regulate the moral and political situation on this planet put it on a sound basis. And when you are regulating the conditions of a planet, it requires a great deal of talk in a great many kinds of ways. And when you have talked a lot, the emptier you get, and get also in a position of corking. When I am situated like that, with nothing to say, I feel as though I were a sort of fraud. I seem to be playing a part, and— Please consider I am playing a part for want of something better, and this is not unfamiliar to me. I have often done this before. When I was here about eight years ago, I was coming up in a car of the elevated road. Very few people were in that car, and on one end of it there was no one except on the opposite seat, where sat a man about fifty years old with a most winning face and an elegant eye, a beautiful eye. And I took him from his dress to be a master mechanic, a man who had a vocation. He had with him a very fine little child of about four or five years. I was watching the affection which existed between those two. I judged he was the grandfather, perhaps. It was a really pretty child, and I was admiring her and as soon as he saw I was admiring her, he began to notice me. I could see his admiration of me in his eye, and I did what everybody else would do, admired the child four times as much, knowing I would get four times as much of his admiration. Things went on very pleasantly. I was making my way into his heart. By and by, when he almost reached the station where he was to get off, he got up, crossed over, and he said, "'Now I am going to say something to you which I hope you will regard as a compliment.' And then he went on to say, "'I have never seen Mark Twain, but I have seen a portrait of him, and any friend of mine will tell you that when I have once seen a portrait of a man, I place it in my eye and store it away in my memory, and I can tell you now that you look enough like Mark Twain to be his brother. Now, he said, I hope you take this as a compliment. Yes, you are a very good imitation. But when I come to look closer, you are probably not that man. I said, I will be frank with you. In my desire to look like that excellent character, I have dressed for the character. I have been playing a part. He said, That is all right, that is all right. You look very well on the outside, but when it comes to the inside, you are not in it with the original. So, when I come to a place like this, with nothing valuable to say, I always play a part. But I will say before I sit down, that when it comes to saying anything here, I will express myself in this way. I am heartily in sympathy with you in your efforts to help those who were sufferers in this calamity. 
and in your desire to help those who were rendered homeless and in saying this i wish to impress on you the fact that i am not playing a part end of galveston orphan bazaar by mark twain read by john greenman